Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was a good warm up, guys. Okay. So, guys, <laughs> looking at the buyer's presentation as a whole, we want to look at it from a 300 foot view, right? We want to know what the hell are we looking at when it comes to this 10, 12 page report that we're about to look at, right? So, when you look at it from the top, the first section of the presentation is pretty much introduction. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much uh, 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 what PRG is about. What are, what are our goals that we're looking for and who the hell we are, right? It, it gives them an idea of what, what we're about, okay? The second part, let's go into the first part. Okay, let's go to the first part. So let's talk about the first part, go for it. So like I was saying, this is our intro. You're meeting with these people the first, for the first time online, they're online leads. You have to sell them on who you are first before they start listening to you. They need to know you're an authority or an expert in this field. So I always tell them, hey, I'm gonna start with a little bit about myself so that you understand you're in good hands. That's all I say, and then I move on. So I say, hey, just a little bit about my team. We are, you know, again, just to remind you, PRG Real Estate, brokered by EXP Realty. We have been in the business for over 15 years, tons of experience. We've actually closed over 500 transactions in the area. And we actually now have over 500 five-star reviews. I always even just emphasize it because it says 300, but now we're over 500 five-star reviews on Zillow and Google. And what that allows us to do is be Zillow Premier Agents, Redfin Partners, and actually we're now Realtor.com Partners, meaning we have access to more listings than most agents in the area, which whatever, that's just how yeah, I say it. I love that, dude, that's <laughs> yeah. So, and then um, that also, because we are in the top 10% of agents in, but, uh, by production in the area, that also, also allows us access into something called the top agent network. So let me ask you, Mr. Byer, are you familiar with what off-market properties are? Listen to how this was played out. She did not look at her notes. This is all from the top of the dome. She had tonality, she had personality, right? And she came from a, a place of authority. This is, this, is what, this is what a top producer looks like, guys. I want you to now start to compare yourselves of what a top producer sounds like. This is her with dozens of fights, of, 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 of fights underneath her belt. This is how your polish is supposed to be at, right? So now I want you to take a, a, a look at how new agents do this, where they're stuttering. You sound like robots. I'm okay with that. Eventually you will get to here. Right. The only way to get to this place is that you need to be, you need to put yourselves in position of fights. The more fights you're in, the better fighter you're going to be at. Right. That was clean. That was awesome, guys. What she just did was awesome. Well, let's go through the whole thing. So that's what I'd say. I'd say, uh, Mr. Barr, how are you familiar with what off-market properties are? Uh, no, no, I've never, it's my first time. I've never done it. Right. Most people haven't. And you'd be surprised to find out that there's really two sections of real estate. One is on market, and that's everything that you're going to be able to find on Zillow, Redfin, Realtor, all those popular home search sites that are sourcing from the MLS, where realtors all upload their listings. But there's this other side called off markets, where where only certain agents in the market will have access to these homes that are being sold privately. Uh, basically, for whatever reason, a seller may want to sell their home off market for privacy concerns. Maybe they don't want their neighbors to know. Maybe they don't want their families to know. Whatever it may be, there's this whole other side of real estate uh, sales that are happening. And then this is where I pull up the top agent network site and I'd say, you know, we have access to this exclusive database where I can source opportunities for you that other realtors and other consumers aren't going to be able to find. Therefore, if I can find you something here, then I could potentially save you some competition, which will in turn save you money because that's what we want, right? Everyone's going to be like, hell yeah. And then I move on. Um, once we go through that, I show them a little bit about the top agent network. We kind of look at that together. I, you know, I kind of say, you know, it's not guaranteed I'll find you something. We definitely find people opportunities here all the time. But of course, people do prefer to sell their home on market because they're going to get the most for their property if they have more eyes on it. Right. And then we kind of just laugh about that. And then I move on. We also have experience in mortgage um, in our office. We do have a team of in-house lenders that we work with and trust. Um, most of the time, there's already going to be a lender on your call. So it, you really have to pivot how you're talking, depending on what has been set up. You're not going to go into Alliance Lending if they just met with Alliance Lending for 30 minutes, right? So, you know, just tailor it. Don't, don't be robots to where you're saying things without actually understanding the context in which you are speaking, because that's really awkward and that breaks rapport. So just be aware of that. Um, I also, and then we finish off this section talking about, um, we're also members of the National Association of Realtors, California Association of Realtors, and the Santa Clara County Association of Realtors. And the only reason why I'm, I'm pointing this out to you is because I wanna show you how much I actually network within my industry as well. 
it's so important to have an agent that is connected with all of the top listing agents in the area so that we have relationships and we can more, more often than not get more information about what the seller is expecting on a certain listing than the next guy. So any inch is really going to help us here because the market is really competitive. And then I'll move on. I'm a fan of sales, guys. When sales is done perfectly, when sales is done correctly, it is a beautiful art form, right? And I want you guys to understand, if you guys are at the lower level and just started off in junior ages, what I want you guys to understand is, look how Z carries herself. That's what you guys should be looking right now. Right now, what she's going to say is going to go over your guys' heads. To my team specialists that are jumping up, this is where you're now starting to get the nitty and gritty. Ask questions, okay? Ask questions. Yep. And then, so at the end of each section, I will always ask, do you have any questions before I move on? You don't want to just blow through the presentation without letting them speak or get stopped for feedback. Most of the time with that section is pretty self-explanatory. Nobody has questions. Okay, fantastic. So again, just want to reiterate what our value here, and we feel it is our extensive market knowledge. Um, you know, I'm out writing offers and looking at properties just about every single day. So I have a really strong pulse on what it's going to take to win in this market. Uh, again, my reputation and network, just knowing so many agents in the area really helps my buyers uh, and, you know, listing agents feel confident with accepting our offer over the next guy because they know there's a good buyer's agent on the other end of the transaction. And I know this is your first time getting into purchasing a home, but there are so many things that can go wrong during this process after we get your offer accepted that the listing agent really wants to know and trust that buyer's agent to know that they can get it to the finish line. And then... Um, what's also unique about our brokerage is, as you can see, because most of the time there'll be two agents on one call, right? So I'll say, as you can see, there's two agents here on this call. That's because we work as a team here. So uh, let's just say Brian's on the call with me. We have Brian here, and how it's going to work is Brian's going to be out with you on the field, showing you properties whenever you would like to go see some. And basically, I'm going to be at a computer. So the moment you guys find a property that you love, Brian's going to text me and say, hey, Z, they love this house on 123 Main Street. Let's go ahead and start pulling disclosures. And immediately to not waste any time at all, because our market moves so quickly, I will be at a computer pulling disclosures, calling the listing agents, starting to build before and starting to find out what it's going to take to get your offer accepted. Boom. Now we settled that. Um, next is also, I just want to let you know to view me as your real estate resource. I have so many people that I trust that I know offer good services at a good fair price. So if you should need anything along this process or even after you've already purchased like handymen, CPAs, you know, contractors, painters, whatever it may be, I probably have someone. So feel free to ask. Okay. Awesome. Do you have any questions? No, no questions yet. Awesome. Feedback on the any feedback, guys? Anything, any questions before we start going on? I would ask yeah. questions, guys. She's great at what she does. I like that streamline. Comments. There you go, Jerry. So I actually had a question about um, in general how common are buyers beyond I, we don't understand that. Oh, what that so mean? you're asking, do other realtors yeah. give buyers consultations? Oh, no. Every agent's different. Um, I would say they give it in one way or another. Do they do it this thoroughly and this professionally? Probably not most of the time. So if you can just get in front of somebody, even if say like how Tyler was saying with somebody that already has an agent. Tell them to sit down with you. And then once you do this, and if their agent didn't do it, you already look way more professional. Yes. And, and, and listen, I would be, I would put, I would put money on it that they are not doing the presentation that we're doing. Uh, uh, nothing closely remote to what they're doing or what yeah. we're doing. I would probably put money on to, it. To add One to that, them. or sorry, go ahead. Very quick, Jerry. Um, perfect <clears throat> example. I guarantee it when you go through the presentation and you see their clients that I've come across that were actively submitting offers. And when we did this, they didn't even know what contingencies were. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't know what an earnest money deposit was. They had no clue of the home buying process. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you, they're vocal about it. Clients are vocal yeah. about this. When you sit down with them, they would say, hey, listen, my agent did not go, did not, well, did not do this. You haven't seen that section. I don't know if you actually looked at it, but we're going to get into like real nitty gritty stuff. And like what the saying, we've had many times I've had people say, I did not know this, even though they were already working with somebody else. That's why in the beginning, I was like, mm -hmm. I've stolen so many people's clients. Yeah. 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 So uh, on the buyer consultations that I've been on, like by the time we get to this part, like after the lenders already did their thing, I feel like my my client's eyes kind of like glaze over. How yes. do you like keep them engaged and like excited for the- Good question. I don't know how you do it, but once they're done with the lender, I, I don't rush right into this. I stop. 
do you guys need to go to the bathroom? How are we doing on time? Uh, and then I start to kind of joke with them. How are you feeling about that? Hopefully you got some good information. Get Let them talk a little bit because that is boring to just be talked that for like 20, 30 minutes. And then once we kind of like warmed up and they're like, no, we're good on time. Like, let's just keep going. Yeah. Awesome. And then I jump right into it. How, how, how long is your presentation? I'll be honest. Mine's kind of long. Mine, I, mine is too. I spend like, mine too. my portion alone probably takes about 40 minutes. But I one okay. thing that I do that I stress all of you guys do is when you are setting that appointment, prepare them for how long they're going to be on that call. I don't like when I'm getting calendar invites with 30 or 40 minutes or one hour for me and Delirio to do a whole presentation. That's not enough time. I'll tell people on the phone, honestly, because you're a first time home buyer and you're probably going to ask a lot of really good questions. My portion, the, the whole entire call will probably take an hour and 30. Now, now uh, uh, actually go for it. Really quick. Like we said, Delirio is like super on it and she's like, she's like and she could do her presentation in 20, 25 minutes. Right. However, when it's a first time home buyer, they're going to have tons of questions yep. on the closing costs, on the interest rate. So that 20 minute presentation for delivery can easily go into 30 or 40 minutes. Right. And then you're counting on another 40 minutes for you. Exactly. So always prep them for at least an hour, hour and a half, possibly two but, but hours. But excite them, yeah. like not like, oh, like, do you have time for this one hour, 30 minute call no, with us? Yeah. Like, no. no, this call is going to take an hour and 30 because you're going to get so much information. So many first time home buyers tend to ask a lot of questions. It can be faster if you don't ask any questions, but for the most part, that's really what it's. And then Encourage people are like, it. okay, like they, they get it. They set that time aside. They put the baby to sleep. They fed it. They're ready to go. Like you want them to be prepared. One, what breaks your poor is when you've only, they've only budgeted an hour for this call. And now we're, we're approaching an hour and they're like, well, you're barely on the about me. Like what the fuck, you know, it's weird. Mm -hmm. it's so, so, so Aaron, the, the, the problem what I see with a lot of presenters, right? This is where I think where there's a difference between an amateur, an amateur and a pro, right? is an amateur is telling, 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 telling. It's really easy to have your eyes glossed over. A professional glosses over. Know. My presentation is, is, is really a conversation that we're both having back and forth. But what you don't know is that you're beating to my, your, my drum. Right. And at the end of the day, it's going, it's going to lead to wherever I want you to lead to. <laughs> but it, the reason why you don't know that is because it's interactive. So that's what I think is the difference between it. When you're asking questions, they don't have time to gloss over. Right. They're, 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 they're part of the, the, right. the, the program itself. Right. And also you guys need to be in control of things. Yes. If they are getting so far off track that now you're, you've been talking to these guys for two hours and you got other appointments coming up and stuff like you need to rein it in and get them back on track. Conversations are like this. We've talked about that, but always after the tangent, you get back online. Okay, good. That was a fantastic question. So if you don't have anything else, let's move on now to this part or whatever it may be. Keep, keep it moving, guys. Um, next part, and, and this is where I say, now you've heard me talk for a little bit, and then we kind of laugh. Say, now let's talk about what, what your goals are. Let me hear from you what exactly you're looking for. I know, and again, don't break report and pretend like you weren't listening, like you guys didn't already have that initial phone call. I know we talked about it on the phone a little bit about what your goals are, but let's dive deep into that so I really understand what you're looking for, what's important to you, and how I can get this done for you. Then they talk. You just, you stay quiet. Then they're going to talk. Well, I need what a three bedroom, two bath property. I need to be up in Evergreen Hills because the schools are great. I have two little ones uh, and that you're are writing, starting to get to an age. You're writing all this down. They're starting to get to a certain age where they need their own room. So that's the reason why we need it. We're, oh, nice. uh, oh, you have kids? Yeah, yeah. I have two How kids. Have two kids. How old are they? They have a boy and a girl. And they're one of 10, the other one's four years old. You must have your hands full. Definitely. They're, full. <laughs> they're running around. So that's the reason why I need a bigger home and with a backyard. I get it. I yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah. Is there anything else that's really important to you? Um, schools are very important for me. They're going to be at that age now where they're going to start to shoot schools. So I really right. want to see schools. Okay. Yeah. Schools. And if, you know, in a perfect world, is there anything else that you really want on your dream house? It would have to have a nice garage. Nice car. Nice garage. I need a garage. Car guy? Car guy. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And then you re you re you talk, you say all that stuff back. So if I have it right, we're looking at whatever the fuck you just said. You repeat it back. Make sure <laughs> that you got it. <laughs> it, it, it that, no, 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 go ahead. That, see how numb she is to the process? That's how numb I am, right? I'm numb to the process. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want to hear, you want to get this. And it sucks guys. When you guys get to but my level, but it's your client's first time. Yes. Us, have fun. Like make yes. them excited. That is like, you got to bring the energy. Just because yes. you've had this conversation on this same script 5,000 times. It can get really boring. It is. This, they all want the same thing. They want the three bedroom with the two in the yard. Yeah, they want them but, good schools. You all want them. Like, yeah, schools. But like, we got to get, get excited about The reason that, why I'm bringing that up guys is because we, our job is to perform. We're performers at that time. 
our job is to perform. We're, we're, it's, they're, they're here to see a show, and I am the, I am the freaking ringleader. One thing right? I do want to point out, if your camera is off, you shouldn't even be on that console. Yeah. You need to keep that camera on and build that face to face. It's already hard enough being on Zoom, trying to build a relationship with this stranger that you've never spoke to before. Well, they have like the freaking kid in the back screaming and all this stuff. You need to have your camera on. You need to look good and you need to be excited. Smile. And if you're a junior agent and you're on with me, your camera is not going to be off. And if it is, I'm not letting you do the, the console. That's how important it is. It's important, guys. It is. And get, remember. It. And, and, and I hate it, too, when lenders have their camera on, too. That is, like, awesome. unacceptable have because it we're have connecting. It off. Yeah. Guys, body language, physical viewing is 80% of the sales process, guys. <laughs> yeah, we it is it a big process. So keep your cameras on. Jerry, what's up? Um, so I don't know if we have time, but I, I know like AJ talks a lot about how his clients love him. There's a lot of competition and kind of wants to that. Okay. So, yeah, I, I mean, talk about building so, I mean, so I think the whole, just this also part of like Aaron's kind of question is my consults are a complete blast. Right. I think even after like the whole delivery part, I kind of joke about it. I was like, man, so glad the financial side. I mean, that's definitely an important part, but man, those numbers can't be higher. You know, you have to build before. Yeah. So, make then, them laugh. Yeah, I think my biggest thing is just make them laugh. They're always excited throughout the whole thing. They want to converse, right? And it's just going back to the questions. Yeah, we have a question. You want because you want them to interact, not not to just be there just to like soak in all the info. and that comes with asking that's, questions that's active goal. listening he gave me some he gave me some information show how do you show that you're listening to what he just said you repeat it back and you even try to find commonalities if he mentioned something like uh i want to pull talk about that oh do you like to swim like it trying to make that a conversation so that the more that they like you and they feel friendly with you going to be an easier transaction yes or no yes yeah. it's a performance guys it is you're performing you are a performer you are your favorite artist on stage that is you regards exactly same thing it does guys that is our job is to perform so but, make sure you're performing you know I, what i want i think today to what we really want to stress is i want to teach you guys how to go through this at the bare like minimum of of being personable but also hitting all these points and as you guys progress into your true, you know, badass agent selves and you get a little bit more experience, then you can change it up a little bit. Then you can, you know, get a little bit more style on it and all that. But at the, at, at the beginning, you at least need to understand the basics of what we're trying to convey because you need to be able to convey all of this to them effectively. We didn't just put this together by accident. Enrique didn't just oh, this looks good. I'll just put this here. There is a reason why it's in this specific order. There's a reason why we need to give them the, this information. Okay. So, okay. So he told me a little about his goals. We talked about, you know, when you look in, make sure that you ask all the questions and ask it again, because I asked him three times, you'll be surprised. You say, is there anything else? Oh yeah. No, maybe just, yeah. 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 All right. So is there anything else? That'll be it. Oh, you know what? I also need a bedroom on first floor. Sometimes you got to keep asking them because they don't really understand. And that's the more specific they can get with their wants and needs, then we can really help service them at a higher level. Because sometimes these can be real broad and it's like you need to narrow that shit down um and then do you have any other questions before we move on no no um uh so how, how, how long is it going to take how long is it going to take me that's a really good question so do you mean the take of like from today to when you actually get your keys yes good question i am going to go over that as we continue to move on perfect you guys got that right you guys what happened right who was in control in that line she controlled it, right? I wanted to move forward as fast as possible. She said, that's a good question. We're going to get there. You're gonna, that's, that's what you're going to get. Perfect. And we go ahead and jump. So now before we get into the home buying process, I do want to talk to you about the market right now so that you have a really good understanding of what you're going to be up against and to really just set us up for success. Um, have you heard anything from your friends and family about, or maybe stuff that you've read that you wanted to talk about, about how the market's going. Yeah, you know, uh, one of my friends has told me that it's not a good time to buy, that it's a seller's market, and that I'm gonna be overpaying for a home that the market is going to crash. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah, uh, you know, you made some good points, but I think there's definitely some stuff we can unpack there just to give you a little bit more clarity of what's going on right now. Um, so first thing, 
first thing that you said was that it is a seller's market and that is not untrue it is a seller's market right now because there is a lot of people out in the market trying to take advantage of the low interest rates and there are just not enough houses for sale so we are seeing some increased competition on the listings that we do have available but that does not actually mean it's a bad time to buy mr buyer because from what i understand with your family situation is you're looking to get into a single family house in this area and you are looking to stay there for the long term. So what I can tell you is that if we look at the data and the historical trends in this area, you are in luck because our values just continue to rise. So what's really awesome right now about our market is that the interest rates are pretty historically, or not pretty, they are historically low. So that has a direct impact on your buying power. So that's why there are actually so many buyers out in the market right now because they understand this and they're trying to take advantage of it and get into the market put their money in that vehicle and let it rise with the market. Now, if you were gonna tell me, Mr. Buyer, that you wanted to buy a house and flip it and sell it within like eight months or a year, then I would say, I don't know, I wish I had a crystal ball, but you can potentially lose money because with any healthy market, there are gonna be little ups and downs, but because you're gonna stay in there long-term, you're gonna be just fine. Any other question? <laughs> uh, uh, so, so is it a good time, should I wait? I mean, like I said, I think with your goals, it would make sense that the sooner you can get into something, as long as you're comfortable with the monthly mortgage and you have a down payment saved, which it definitely sounds like you do, I think this is a fantastic time to buy. Cool. And then, um, then so, okay, so basically you would answer their questions. I like to start with that because I want to know right away, what are their objections? What is in the back of their mind? I don't want to just start saying stuff to them, I would like rather prefer to tailor my message to what his concerns were. Because now they're addressed, he's more disarmed. Now I can just say, okay, and I also want to give you some other generalities about the market before we move on. Um, you know, it's hard to get real, real specific until we are figuring out exactly what neighborhood that you want to be in and what that looks like. But what I can tell you is most listings are getting sold really quickly under 10 days or less. So let's be really proactive. If there are listings that I send you or that you send me and that you do want to see that we try to get out there as soon as possible. So we're not missing any opportunities. Um, I also want to illustrate something about how houses are being priced right now. It is unfortunately a very common strategy for sellers and realtors to price the house for much less than it is actually worth. So do not get tied to what they're asking for because it might not be in alignment with what the true market value is for that property. So how I'm going to help you is once we start looking at homes that you are interested in, I'm going to be running comps for you. And that's basically looking at the, all the pending contingent and sold homes in that really like narrow 0.25 mile radius of that home and really helping you understand what houses are actually selling for to understand what the true value is that part to me is really important okay let's stop right there that was big there was, there was a couple of key takeaways on that part does anybody understand what she just did she prepped them for what the market's going to look like and what they're going to see like on the market like just because this house is worth at 800 doesn't mean the value can't be Okay. She just set expectations. A lot of the problem, sometimes what I see guys when it comes to expectations is a lot of people, they like to fluff things. Oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. I set my expectation bar really low, right? But that's, the, that's what she's doing. You have to set expectation. Now, the second thing, is there anything else that you guys caught on that part when she, after she set expectation, what else does she do? She doesn't know how they're going to address like those like lower like what she's going to do to, to help we call that value there you go. <laughs> so she just she did two things she did expectations and she also presented her value as a real estate agent of why you need her in your corner okay so pay attention to those kind of things go for it awesome um and and then i just finished off with my generality so um yes interest rates are really low uh things are selling quickly uh, we talked about the pricing, how it works, because that that's key to me talking about the pricing and how it works, because I don't want to be every day explaining that, that why is this house listed at 1.5 if it's not going to sell? If you nip that in the bud up front, that'll save you a lot of headache down the road. Prep them. Um, and then I just say, do you have any? Oh, go ahead. So like you said, we're going to go over like contingent homes. And yeah, all that. we're going to go on. Um, if they ask you while you're talking about like, you the market you're run contingencies on the houses when yeah. you're running comps um if they ask you all oh, like what is that do you tell them what is that or do you tell them to wait 
That's a good question. I'm actually going to get into that in the next section. She just did it to you. You understand that? She just she just yeah. did it yeah. to you, <laughs> right? So she who's driving the car? She's driving the car. She always does drive the car. Can two people drive the car? No, they can't. Right. So she just did what you just asked her to do. Right. And in, 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 in a, what she basically did say, hey, listen, she addressed your situation and said, hey, listen, that's a damn good question that you just asked. Right. I go, I'm about to get to that right now. Right. And then it allows her to move forward along in a presentation. That's called a straight line process. That's when you start going to the side, you get back on the line, you keep walking forward. Right. Cool. So uh, if you don't have any other questions about the market, I'm going to jump into the home buying roadmap. And essentially what this is, is a really an overview of the process from literally this consultation to when I'm going to be handing you your keys. Okay. Okay, great. So basically we break this process up into three phases. One is going to be finding your new home. Second portion is when we're in escrow and three is the closing process. So you're in phase one right now. We're doing our initial consultation. You're figuring out what your wants and needs are. You're talking to the lender. We're getting your financing sorted out, which to me, and I always say it's the most important part of this part is going to be getting your financing in order. Um, I always stress that because we need them to submit their documents to Alliance so that we can get that true pre-approval and see what they are actually qualified for. We don't want to spend a lot of time showing people that are unqualified houses. Um, I don't say that to them, but to you guys. <laughs> and then three, we're going to start, uh, once, uh, once all that's taken care of, we're going to start looking for property. The way that that's going to be done is I'm going to be sending you search, uh, I'm going to be sending you properties that fall within this criteria that you've shared with me. But as all of my other clients, you guys, I know you guys are going to be up at midnight sending me listing on Zillow, and that is perfectly okay. If you see anything that you're interested, again, I do have access to all of the homes in California. So just go ahead and send those to me, and I can set us up a private tour. Once we find a property that you love, we are going to make an offer. So the things that we're going to look at when we make an offer, again, are going to be those comps. I'm going to help you digest the data in the area and figure out what are the homes actually selling for so that we have some uh, idea of what we need to do in order to put an offer in that is potentially going to get to this house. Second thing I'm going to do is do a ton of due diligence with the listing agent. I'm going to find out what the seller's expectations are. You know, how many offers are they expecting? How many showings did they have? How many people downloaded disclosure packages? As much data as I can humanly get because every piece will help us create an offer that is a winning offer, I guess is what I'd say. Next, once we get your offer accepted, well, any questions before I move on? No, I don't know. Uh, no, no, there's no questions that I move on. Okay, perfect. So then we enter phase two. Um, are you familiar with what escrow is? Uh, no, actually, I have no idea what, what escrow is. Perfect. A lot of people have, let me pause real quick. One thing I've also noticed with a lot of your, the newer people, for some reason, you guys ask them over and over and over, do you know what this is? Do you know what this is? Do you know what this is? This is the only time I'll ever ask them. Just, just because I'm talking a lot at this point, I want to hear them. I want to wake them up. I want to hear them speak. So I'll say, are you familiar with the escrows? Yes or no? I don't care what the answer is. I just want them to talk. That is the only time I'll ask them a first time home buyer, are you aware of what this is? Yeah. They don't know. They're first home homebuyers. And, and when you guys keep asking, it makes them feel stupid. Like, you want to be asked 16 times and say no 16 times that you don't know what something is like it's really <laughs> that's good that's so good. awkward so 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 guys that that i do agree it, it is is you guys need to once you guys get the presentation you guys need to find out how to we call it checking in right you need to check in with your clients to make sure they're still freaking alive and listening to you right so asking certain questions in certain times of your presentation is key you, how you do it it's up to you i i say is there any questions that you have do you understand what that means and, and then she'll say, hey, do you know what escrow means, right? You check, figure out ways to check in with them because what can happen is if you're the only one talking and they're not talking, they're going to gloss over, right? Yep. So then they'll say, yes, I know, whatever. They'll give me their answer. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to reiterate it anyways. That's the other thing. When you guys keep asking them if they know it, you tell them either way. So it's like, it's so weird. So anyways, okay, great. Yeah. That's basically, so escrow is a third party intermediary company that acts between the buyer and the seller. And they're just gonna be making sure that both sides fulfill their contractual obligations before they release anything to the other side. Okay? okay. Perfect, so. <laughs> thank you. So actually what I'm gonna do now, and this is, this is literally how I do it. I'm gonna jump down to a sample escrow timeline because there are some things that I want you to be aware of. So 
on a 30 day escrow example, the day that we get your offer accepted is gonna be considered day zero. I want you to be aware that within three business days, you're gonna to have to submit what's called an earnest money deposit to escrow. That, and then I jump up. The earnest money deposit is a 3% deposit of the home's purchase price that is given upfront three days after, within three days after your offer is accepted, which is initially your skin in the game. It's showing the sellers that you are serious about your offer and you do not intend to back out of the offer unlawfully. And then I stop, I say, well, I asked, do you guys have any questions about that? It's usually. No. That, that is usually the scary part, in my opinion, is when someone has to actually fork over 3%, which in our case is 30 grand off a million dollars. That's a minimum on uh, average is about 30 is about 30 grand. So now what I do when it comes to the EMD is I stress it because I know that red flags are already going off of their head. Well, this is that's where so I take them. So I, I use the word unlawfully. I use that every single time I say, if you back out of the contract unlawfully and then I stop, I say, but there are ways for you to back out of the contract lawfully. And these are called contingencies. And then I jump up here and I say, there are three contingencies that we may or may not put on your offer. We might use one of them. We might use two of them. We might use all three of them, or we might not use any of them. It's really going to depend on the specific situation at that time. And I'll help you cross that bridge when we come to it. But right now, for today's purposes, I'm going to briefly go over what they are so that you are aware of your uh, rights as a buyer. And I always say, okay, great. The first one is the inspection contingency. This is the, this is how I say it, Beth. This is the least utilized contingency. I'm already setting the stage for what I want to happen. The reason being is because most sellers in our area are proactive and what they're doing is ordering inspections on their own home before they put the mark, before they put the house for sale. This is gonna be a property inspection, a roof inspection and a pest inspection. So this will cover everything in the home and give you a really strong understanding of the home's condition before we even write the offer. So what the seller is expecting is that we already factor in any work that needs to be done into our price and we go ahead and waive this inspection contingency. On the flip side, if there's a situation where we come across a seller has not done any inspections, then we would utilize the inspection contingency to give ourselves a week or so after we get our offer accepted to get our own inspections done on the property. And that way, if we find anything major wrong with the house, we can go back and renegotiate. And if we cannot come to some sort of agreement, then we can go ahead and back out of the contract and get your earnest money deposit back with no issues. Do you have any questions about this one? No, oh, no, sounds fair. Do, awesome. Do they ever tell you like 3% above like the, what you were gonna give? Like, as a time? What? Like, do they ever tell you if it's separate? Like if the earnest money deposit is separate? I get into that, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, okay, great. So next one is going to be the appraisal contingency. So the appraisal contingency is something that we can utilize if we feel that there is going to be a discrepancy between a huge discrepancy between the purchase price that you've offered and what the home is actually worth. But the way that my clients are comfortable waiving this contingency is because they know that I'm aware of what appraisers are looking at when they're writing offers. They are actually looking at the same exact things that I do when, when I'm putting together your offer. We're gonna look at the recently sold in the area in a 0.25 mile radius in the last 120 days or so. And we're gonna come up where, and then we're also looking at the condition of the home compared to the other homes in the area. And that's how we come up with our value. Appraisers are going to be looking at the same thing. So for the most part, I what I or so what I do to give my clients comfort in this is basically I'll kind of tell, I will tell them how risky their offer is. Is it low risk for some appraisal difference? Is it medium or high risk? And we can kind of go from there to see what you're comfortable with, because this is going to be totally up to you what you would like to do. Another thing that helps people become at ease with this, because Mr. Byer, you have a healthy down payment of 25%. If for some reason our appraisal comes in short, for example, you offer a million dollars on this property and the appraisal comes back at $990,000, you can even reallocate some of your down payment to cover that appraisal difference. And that's totally okay, even if we've stated different on our original offer. Do you have any questions about that? No, no, no. Okay. Can we negotiate that price? Can you negotiate? Yes. So as long as we are within our contingency period, if there is a delta um, between the 
appraised value and what you've actually offered, then we can go back to the seller and renegotiate on that price. If we're able to come to an agreement, then we would remove the contingency and move on. If we are unable to come to some sort of agreement, then you can go ahead and back out of the contract and get your earnest money deposit back. If you do not use this contingency and there is that uh, discrepancy in appraisal versus purchase price, then you, Mr. Buyer, are going to be responsible for that difference out of pocket. Okay, got it. Then we're moving on to the loan contingency. Um, I briefly go through this. This contingency, I will defer to the lender that you're you, that you're working with yeah. to see how comfortable and confident they are in your file. Um, you know, mo if you and then this is where I also spend some time. If a client has chosen a lender that's not Alliance and they're coming to me with some crappy pre-approval from Better.com or whatever, this is where I'll massage in like that. You know trying to get them over to Alliance. Like you need to be working with a lender that has fully underwritten your file, meaning they've verified all of your documents and your employment, and they are confident enough to give you this loan as long as you don't do anything crazy during escrow, like buy a car or something. And usually people laugh at that. And it has happened. Um, and it, oh, it's definitely happened. What, 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 I, what I want you to understand guys is that even though we have an in-house lending like Alliance, it's Alliance and PRG, there are two different companies. What I don't want you guys to do is I don't want you to associate. I work with the I work with Alliance yes. lending, right? Because it has happened instances where Alliance does not perform, and then they associate us as a real estate agent. Yeah, so I do you, make that distinction too. I always say just want to point because if Delirio or someone was on the phone call, I just say I do want to point out me and Alliance are two separate PRG and Alliance are two separate entities. So should you choose to get your lending elsewhere, that does not affect our relationship on the real estate side. And, and you, you need, have to make that distinction. You have to make it clear, guys, because they will associate the lender and they will associate the real estate agent. Same thing with if they don't like you as a real estate agent, but they love our Alliance lending because we can provide them. We don't want to f that up either for Alliance lending either. But we have to make it a part that they're two different entities two different companies and sometimes it happens sometimes we lose them on the real estate side but alliance still gets to close them on the lending and sometimes the lending they lose them because of the rates or whatever and we still keep them as clients yeah so make that distinction no any questions before we move on about any of the contingencies no, no, no. any questions from you guys so what what happens if if, if there's an issue with any of these okay, i mean uh, well, let's say there's the, the the reports come back and they're bad the reports for the inspections yeah so like we spoke or like i said um for the inspections as long as you're within your contingency period we have room to go back and renegotiate on price maybe on some credits or even having the seller complete that work before we close escrow okay. everything in real estate is a negotiation okay okay perfect all right so now jumping back down here i do want to point out to you mr buyer that the emd the 3% per, uh, that's given up front is going to get counted towards your total down payment. That portion is just given up front. So if you're doing 20% down, 3% up front, and then when we jump down here to the sample escrow timeline, the rest of the 17% would get fun, would get wired over within the last couple of days before the close of escrow. So just want to reiterate again on the sample escrow timeline that once you have removed all your contingencies, there's really no way to get out of the contract without putting your earnest money deposit at risk. But typically by this point, people are very happy because you know the condition of the home is fine. You know it appraised, everything's going well. So we're excited, we're in phase three now. This is the closing process. Within the last few days, your loan documents are gonna be sent out and you're gonna go with the escrow company and sign them in person or through a notary. And then we're going to get to go back to the property and do what's called a final walkthrough where we verify the condition of the home make sure it's the same as when we first offered on it really just making sure that the seller didn't accidentally bust a window when they're moving their couch out or something like that and then about day 29 your loan is going to get funded from the bank to the escrow company that's when you'd wire the remainder of your down payment and then on day 30 we get to uh, the escrow company would release the funds to the seller they'd release uh the transfer of ownership to the county for them to report it. And once that happens, then me and Brian are going to get to meet you at your property, give you those keys and congratulations. You'd be a homeowner. Awesome, awesome. Every time that happens, like there's like this, like the client always laughs. It's like they smile, they laugh. We kind of like sit there for a second. And so, so how long, so this takes 30 days is what you're saying? 
So that's going to depend. The length of an escrow is dependent on the lender that in which you choose. Some lenders can do it uh, faster in like 21 days, 18 days, but 30 days is pretty typical. You don't want to find, you don't want to work with a lender that's doing anything past really like 30 days, because that's not going to be seen as a competitive offer in our market that moves really quickly. Okay. Okay. So the only change that I would do to this timeline, guys, is day zero is actually day one. That's the only thing. So, so that there was, there's an error on that. So offer accepted is considered technically day one. So if the offer got accepted, because the, the things wouldn't start like day when you're counting to be the next day. So the day gets ratified is considered day one. So let's say, for example, there could be back and forth contracts, multiple contracts going back and forth, and they finally both parties agree. Let's say they agree at 1150, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's your luck. It's still considered day one, even though there's 10 minutes in the day, it's still considered day one. Um, 100%. Yeah, but I'm saying it depends what you're counting it for, right? What do you mean? What do we say? Say it again. Like, say we ratified at 11:58 uh, on Friday. Friday. Yeah, the next day would be uh, no 11:50. Because it's say for you have a five-day contingency period. When would that? It, it would start from day one, from 11:50. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah. So so if it, so let's go with your logic, right? Let's so when would technically well Monday. when is Saturday? What what time on Saturday would it start? Which is 11.59? Nah. Wait, 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 what do you mean? So like, like we got to, if there's a, a, a day is considered 24 hours. It's from, uh, from 11.50, not from. So for 12? EMD purposes. They for EMD purposes. Accepted at 11, Friday. At 11.50 on Friday. Then you Any technically have, uh, well, if it's on Friday, then it's business days, right? Yeah. Saturday and Sunday would not count. Then it would be Monday and Tuesday. It would be due on Tuesday. Mm. Okay. Day. Let's. Right. Let's talk it up to it. <laughs> it would be the other day. Kidding. Trust me, guys. Whatever. Your client should be doing 24 hours acceptance anyway. <laughs> yeah, they should. Same day. They right. should. Moving on. Get it in. Moving on. No questions about the that the home buying process, right? Okay, awesome. So and then one thing I noticed too, when you guys are going through this, we don't actually go over the loan process slide. We have it in here for the buyers. And I say that. I say, hey. This slide is about the loan process, but you just talked with Delirio or whatever, and you already went through this. So I'm not going to go through it with you. It's just in here if you want to go back and review it, because you have to keep in mind at the end of this, we're sending this to them. We're going to get them to sign it. But what I, we're also doing is letting them download it. They can keep it. They can look at it. Yeah. So get away from the loan process, guys, in the packet. Does, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. There yes, you go. You're not stay a lane. in your lane. But one thing that I want to stress is don't just do this. Don't go from sale process timeline and then to the next phase because it's like what did you just skip yeah and you're going to try to get them to sign this at the end of it but what was that slide you just skipped it looks weird so don't do that say hey i'm going to skip over this it's just a lending portion go ahead and look at it on your own time if you have any questions about it let us know okay great so now i'm going to jump into our vip loyalty program um you guys should know what all of this says you need to read it don't read it verbatim when you are going through it what i've started to do now because if you've done your presentation right you've already talked about all of this you don't need to like drown them again with the same information it breaks report it's boring now you're going on an hour 15 minutes they're tired they just got off work don't do that um in the beginning i would suggest that maybe you guys touch on these points a little bit um i'm at a point now where i kind of like you know this, this is what these are my promises to you as your real estate agent so that you know it, it's everything that we've talked about, but I just want to put it down here in writing so that if any if at any time you feel like i'm not living up to my promises to you, you can take this put it back in my face and say hey what's going on right. Um, so we go over to the VIP buyers um, quickly let's do it your way. Well that that's my way, but if you were going to go through it I would quickly just sum up. Hey, we're going to make sure that we help find you the best financing for your situation. Um, obviously, my goal at, throughout any step of this process is going to be to try to save you money, whether that be with your financing, finding things on the inspections, whatever it may be. Great. Uh, we are going to be, like I said, providing you with on and off market listings. If you find anything yourself, feel free to send it over and we'll go ahead and set up that private tour for you. Um, if you want to see anything Privately, of course, let me know. You're also welcome to go to open houses. Um, those are back as of a couple months ago. So feel free to stop by if you're driving around a neighborhood that you like and let them let the agent know my contact information. And then, you know, you're welcome to see any home that you, you happen to drive by, whatever. 
Um, the one thing that, and then this is where I stop. The one thing that I do want to stress to you guys, um, are you familiar with what new construction properties are? This is another time I'll ask them because I want to know if they're looking or thinking about that as well. And they say, they might say, yeah, we, we, we like these new builds or whatever. We wanted to go check them out. Great. One thing I do want to warn you is that I would highly recommend that you call me before you step foot into one of those new construction offices. What's going to happen is they're going to register you the moment you walk in, and that is going to bar you from bringing your own outside representation. I, and then I would say, I have friends that do these kind of sales and they're great people, but they're absolutely sharks and they are going to tell you whatever it takes. And I'll be, I'll be honest, they kind of lie sometimes and they tell you things that aren't necessarily true. And I always say that. That's and then that scares them because they're like, <laughs> they're like, oh shit, like I definitely need to bring you with me. So I say, so just let me know if there's any community that you're interested in seeing, I'll go ahead and go with you and set up that tour for you. Okay. What's up? What's up, everybody? Questions? Zoom land? Oh, I think somebody just joined us. Well. Oh, okay. Okay. That, that's. That was actually really good, guys. The the, the the new build guys. That's that was an awesome way of putting it. I like that. So, Aaron, you 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 know about new builds? How new builds work? No, I just learned that. I didn't know that they would register you. And yeah. So so any new builds that you end up going to, if you don't take your clients with them on the first visit, they they you they automatically snake it. So they don't they don't they don't cut they won't you. Pay you. They won't pay you. So we so that's why I kind of scare them. Like, don't go without me. Because I'm not going to tell them, oh, I'm not going to get paid if you don't go, but I'm going to say, hey, look, again, trying to show my value that I'm going to protect you from whatever bullshit they're going to tell you. In the fine lines of a new build, too, there are some new builds that after 30 days, if you don't re-register with your client and check in, wow. you're out. Yeah. Like yeah. you have to read, you have to read that contract that you're signed, the referral agreement, because I had one where I had to re-register my client because after 30 days, they're kind of just like floating there right now. I was like, no, I'm still working with this client. I just wanted to check in if you can resign, resend me this contract agreement. No, we're still interested in purchasing this home. Uh, I, I've lost them. I've lost a couple yeah. of them because so of look at the look at do the new construction ones. They, do they always have to like go through the the listing agent? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Always like with the, There's always, a sales office at every new construction community. Yeah. So if your client wants to see it, you go with them, go to that sales office, and then you just you'd all register. You'd register, they'd register, and then you're you're together. Yeah. I, what do you mean that you have to check in with the because there's with the, the sales because office? Because sometimes on that agreement that you sign, I had one where um, after 30 days, if I didn't check in and have the uh, the agreement like renewed. renewed, then that client would just be theirs. Because they don't, because there's no staff, because he was just waiting for a home, right? He because a lot of the times, though, there's nothing available in these yeah. communities yeah. right away. They're built to, or, they're you know built yeah. after they're ordered. So, like he's saying, sometimes stuff doesn't open up. A lot's not getting sold for another few months. That he would have lost the client. Yeah, right? so now, what the, what I wanted you guys to understand is how she actually put that in a, in her presentation, which I thought was awesome. Right? Is that she put a little bit of fear into her clients. And saying, "Hey, listen, if you go there, this is what, what could potentially happen. But don't worry, I'm here to make sure that that does not happen when you bring me along." So it gives them that incentive, like, "Hey, listen, I need to take Z along with me, right?" So how she put that—that that was great. It was awesome. Uh, could you remind me again if they go in there without outside representation? Do they also have like lenders that they have yes. to go with? Or yes. Well? So they are always preaching that that you have to use the lender that they have and because they have their own in-house lenders most of the time i found that all they actually require is that you qualify with that lender but then you can use whatever lender that you actually want yeah now they're, but they're it, not telling people that they're telling people the opposite you're right and, and but they are trying to take the, they are trying to keep that business because they are they do offer incentives the incentives are great and you'll lie right they give you certain things right but that doesn't mean that the buyer cannot go outside and hire a Rudy, a hire a Deliri, where they can now prove to them that they that they that they can earn their business. Yes. Any questions? Okay. And then we move on from that. Um, and I say, of course, Ms. Ryer, once we find that property that you want to make that offer on, I am going to help you by putting together those comps and doing all of that due diligence for you. But at the end of the day, you are in the driver's seat. So I'm never going to pressure you to put an offer in that you are not comfortable with. I'm never going to pressure you to pay more than you want to. You are in control. I'm just here to advise you as the expert. Now, if I see you doing anything that is looks extremely risky to me, I will give you the heads up. But again, you're in control. Because again, that like, it like shifts the power. Like it's like, 
I'm not trying to tell them like what they need to do because there's a lot of pushy realtors and I get a lot of feedback that like from a lot of my clients like hey I've worked with other realtors before and like you're so different because I always felt like when it came down to offer time if I didn't put a certain offer if I didn't offer at all after they showed me the house they would get really mad at me so sometimes like you want to just ease that concern and just again not be that pushy salesman that everyone thinks of when they think of realtors and car salesmen um and then again, I just remind them, if you do need any recommendations, again, just use me as your real estate resource. I have so many people that I'm happy to refer out to you for those services, whatever it may be. And of course, at the end of all this, I am going to come to you and, and ask you for a review. I showed you how all the reviews earlier and how much they impact our business. So I hope that at the end of all this, you're going to be so happy to leave me a five-star review. If at any time during our transaction, you feel that I am not living up to my promises, I strongly urge you to come talk to me so that we can see what's going on and that I can try to remedy that situation. Okay? Now, 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 why is this important to you? Why, why, is, why is going down this bulletproof important right now at this stage of the game? You're, you're setting expectations, you're showing them your value, and you're already telling them what you're going to be doing. You are listing like all of these things that you do. Why? What's coming next after this? Well, now you're going to get try to get them to sign. There you go. So the reason what we're doing is we're giving one last shot and throwing everything at the kitchen table, right? Of why we're great, right? Yeah. Because what's going to happen is now what we're doing is we're going to ask for something, right? right? So now we're going to ask for, for the signature. A signature. Because basically we, okay. So before we ask the signature, there's one more thing, right? We go through the bonuses. So. Uh -huh. okay. I said like this. Okay, so you also are going to get some bonuses for working with my team. And again, your energy, you got to bring it back up, get them excited. Bonuses. Everyone likes free stuff, right? First thing that you're going to get for working with us, Mr. Buyer, is a one year home warranty. Basically, this will protect you for your first 12 months of home ownership should anything go wrong with your home. You go ahead and call this home warranty company, they're going to come assess the situation and take care of it for you. Okay. Okay. Any questions about that? No. Awesome. Bonus number two is our cancellation guarantee. There are a lot of realtors in our area that will lock their clients into a buyer broker agreement where if that buyer does any real estate transacting that they are tied to that one realtor for like one to three years or whatever they agree on. I don't know if that's true. I always say that though. It is true. What I say, you use that too. It is and, but I, what I say, but what we do at PRG Real Estate is we don't believe in locking our clients into any sort of agreement like that. I want to work with you as long as you want to work with me. Okay. Yep. So if at any time you feel like you do not want to go down this road together anymore, all I ask is that you send me a simple text or a call and just let me know so that I'm not allocating a bunch of time digging through off markets if you really have no intention to buy. Sound fair? Fair enough. Awesome. And are you aware of how commissions work in our area? No, no, so you have no idea. Awesome. So I'm going to start with bonus number four. You as a buyer actually do not have to pay any commissions to me at all. So really? all you have to worry about is your down payment and your closing costs. And you're going to get my expertise for free. So who, who, how do you get paid? That's a good question. I am going to get paid from by the seller. And those commissions are already pre-negotiated for every house before they're even put on the market. And they're always the same. So there's no bias to which house I'm going to be showing you. So Z, I got to ask you. Sure. My friend says that I should be asking for a 1% back that you guys give commission back if you guys are selling my house. Oh, you know what? I get asked that question a lot. And there are some lower level realtors that do give commissions back. But unfortunately, we don't do that because of all the value that we provide and all of the extra access to resources that my team has. And also all of my expertise going into this, I don't give uh, money back. But the way I am going to save you money is on throughout the process by finding things that another realtor might miss in the inspections by negotiating you a price where you're winning, but you're not overpaying. Does that sound good? That sounds awesome. Awesome. Next, I want to get into bonus number three, because I think it's really unique and I've never seen another realtor offer this. What it is, is our sell for free guarantee. So if you are unhappy with your purchase for whatever reason within the first 12 months, we will go ahead and help you sell your house for free. We'll waive our listing commission. And like you, like you just heard, all of the sellers are paying all these big commissions. So again, this is big time because it'll save you money and help you get out of that property. I don't know, maybe you have like a crazy Karen neighbor, like you just want to get out of there. We'll take care of you. People always laugh at that. 
And then I'll say the only condition that applies is obviously we're not going to do this for you if you're intending to buy a property, fix it up, and flip it for a profit. And of course, you'll still have to buy, buy the buyer's agent commission or pay the buyer's agent commission. But again, we're just offering this to our clients for that true peace of mind because I truly want you to be happy with your purchase. I've never had to do this, thankfully, because we do so much, you know due diligence with our clients that everyone's always happy with their purchase, but I just want to offer you that for your peace of mind. Okay? Awesome. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, what are the conditions that apply? Oh. I never like seen For what conditions? For what? Uh, oh, I just said, it's, we don't do them for flips. So if you're going to buy a house, flip it, we're not going to do that, obviously. And you have to, you have to pay the buyer's agent still. Oh. Or else nobody's, and I would say, unfortunately, no one would bring any, any clients to your house. And they always laugh. They get it. They're not dumb. Yeah, no one's out here working for you. Buy your next one with us too. Is that another? I, I, oh, we, 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 that's I just, the expectation, right? The expectation okay. is that if we're going to sell a property, that we make our commission because we're not going to make a commission, mm -hmm. but we make our commission when we take them out of that house and put them into another house. Right. Now, I'm going to be completely honest, guys. We've never, we've never done this before. Yeah. I, I, we've never used it. I got damn close to using it, but I've never used it. But it sounds like, doesn't yeah. it sound good though? Like, yeah. oh, like, yeah, damn close. Don't, don't you feel Keep safer? Like, now, because home buying is, it's nerve wracking. Like, yeah. am I making the right decision? That's what everyone's thinking. But now it's like, oh, you have all these layers. Oh, we have a home warranty. Great. We have a, oh, we can sell it for, like, you know, like, it's like, it just makes them feel good. People like this. People like guarantees. People like a ways out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like, They're not really. so locked in because real estate is, it's real, real, like, it's a commitment. Yeah. It's a big lifetime commitment. Okay, perfect. So last thing I want to talk about is there is one fee that is going to be due at closing to PRG Real Estate. This fee actually does not go to me. Let me set this up. Guys, pay attention to this. This is our biggest one right here. This is the biggest rebuttal throughout the whole thing. Okay, so pay attention to this kind of stuff and ask questions. Go. Okay, so there is going to be one fee due at closing. So only if you actually buy a house to PRG Real Estate, and that is an $895 transaction fee. Now, this fee does not go to me. It is going to go to our legal transaction coordinator. Her name is Melissa New, and she's going to be making sure that your file is done up to the Department of Real Estate Standards and that you're being provided all of the legally required seller's disclosures and that everything has been filled out to protect you from any liability issues, okay? Okay, um, and I, this is new to me, Z, right? Yeah. But I, I, I went to another one and they didn't say anything about a, a transaction fee, of this 895 fee. Yeah, there are some realtors that don't use the transaction coordinator. And I honestly feel like it's a huge disservice to their clients because I'm not a lawyer and I am not, you know, uh, I wouldn't even, I would just say, there are, she is protecting you from any sort of liability, right? So just really making sure that she's fine to going through those contracts with a fine tooth comb and making sure that everything is there and you're being provided all these sales disclosures because have you ever bought a car? Yes. The amount of paperwork that's involved with buying a house is like 10 times that. Yes. So we need somebody that is trained and extremely knowledgeable on those contracts to make sure that you're going to be protected. That's awesome. That's awesome. And when do I pay this? So this is going to be paid at closing. So it's not actually going to come out of pocket. It's going to be rolled up into your closing costs. Okay. Okay. And when you spoke with Delary earlier, she actually included this in your closing cost fee. So I think it fits into alignment with what your budget is anyways. Perfect. Awesome. And another thing that she's going to do is once we close, she's going to send you a USB that has everything that you ever signed throughout this transaction, as well as the inspections included in that package. So that during, you know, when you're doing your taxes, or if you want to do some renovations in the future, everything is in one convenient place for you to find super easily. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Any other questions? No. Well, congrats. You've made it through the presentation. That's actually all I have for you. The rest of this is just our cancellation guarantee in writing so that you know that we are not holding you to like any sort of legally binding agreement. All right. Okay. This is where selling actually starts guys. This is the selling part now. Okay. So this is how it goes down. Everything is always all, uh, uh, it, it, it's all happy. There's elves dancing in the fields up until now. <laughs> Okay, now it changes. Here we go. Awesome. So like I told you, I am going to be sending this presentation to you right now so that you can download a copy for your file. If you want to pull up your email right now, it's actually in your inbox under a DocuSign link. If you would just click through that and then we'll go ahead and move on to the next portion where we actually set up some appointments, okay? Um, you know what? Listen, Z, I'll be honest here. You're great. You did an amazing job. 
Um, I just got to think about it. You know, I, I don't know if I if I'm ready to make this commitment to sign uh, uh, anything right now at this point. I totally get it. And you know, you're not actually signing like your life or anything like that. It's actually just to acknowledge that you've seen the presentation and that you're aware of it. And then we can just, it allows it for my back file so that we can move forward. It's really no commitment. And, and, oh, I, mean, I gotta be honest, cause you've been great with us. I mean, my wife has an agent and I kind of told her that we were gonna end up kind of meeting with her. Oh, okay. Have you, you guys haven't met with that other no, agent No, we yet? haven't. Okay. So I kind of just wanted to give her a shot. I totally understand. And I appreciate that as an agent, you know, if we go through that situation all the time, may I ask you, is there anything that you guys have seen today that gives you doubt that I will not be able to bring this home for you guys successfully? No, 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 Z, but you know what? You are the first agent that we have interviewed. Lucky you. Yeah. I can save you from a lot of appointments because I'll tell you this. <laughs> no, 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 guys, this is awesome. This is sales. This is sales. <laughs> Pay attention. I'll, I'll tell you this. I, and not to toot my own horn, but I'm one of the best in the industry. You've seen my track record. I've sold almost 30 houses in the past one year. The industry averages four, four houses um, a year. Yeah. That's yeah, crazy, wow, right? Yeah. And I really would hate for you guys to walk away and get involved with somebody that is not going to do your family some you know, justice and really get this done at the high level and make sure you guys are protected. Got it. Got it. Well, you know what, Z? I, I'm sorry to keep doing this to you. No, I love but... the transparency. And I'd rather you get out all of your you know, fears and concerns out while you still have me right here so that you guys don't go off and, you know, make a bad decision. That's good, guys. You want to know everything up front, okay? Uh, you know what, Z, you know what, I'm sorry to keep doing this to you, but I don't know if we're ready now. I mean, maybe we might be ready like in six months. You know, this is a big step for us. I mean, what do you... Oh, you know what? I've had clients that I've been working with for years. There is no mm -hmm. timeline when it comes to real estate. We move at the pace that you need to move at. Mm -hmm. If you tell me you need to find a house... <laughs> and be moved in within one month. I've met a client and got them into contract within five days of meeting them. You have done it even in three days. If you tell me you're not gonna be ready for another year because you have all this stuff going on, I'm okay to do that as well. We can move slower and I'll continue to remind you of this information when we cross that bridge because I know it was a lot of information that you may forget between now and that. Sound good? Yeah, that, that, that was big, guys. That was awesome, guys. That was awesome. I want you guys, this, this is what a professional does, guys. This is what a pro, a top level agent does right? Is that she did not back out from a fight. She went into the fight, right? And what, how does, how is she able to do this? Because she's studied this guy. She's done this. She's been in many fights where she knows the rebuttals and how to fight these rebuttals. That is the goal that you guys should be at, right? So now what happens after this? Okay, great. So now that we've addressed all of your concerns, why don't you go ahead, click through that. And while you do that, I'm going to pull my calendar up and pull these other properties that I found that I think you'd be really interested in. And let's see if you want to schedule some showings. Got it. Okay. We go in there and we're signing. Now, what did she do? Because she went over that quickly. After I sign at the same time, she's already pulling up calendar. her calendar to set the next appointment. You, everything on a sales call has a purpose. There's an end purpose to it, right? Her end purpose for this appointment is to keep the process moving forward. The way to move that forward is to schedule an appointment. When is available time for us to meet so that we can go ahead and show you homes that you are looking for, right? Set that appointment right then and there. And that's what she's doing. So what I, she does, I literally, I'm signing. I pull up my, he signs, I pull up the calendar still on screen share. Look at that. That looks That's like good, huh? I'm the busiest person in the world, doesn't it? So there's a lot of clients that will say, we're not ready to set the next point right now. I totally understand. But as you can see, my schedule does fill up quickly. So why don't we just put something tentative on the calendar for now for next weekend? And between now and then, I'll send you some stuff. You send me some stuff. And if there's anything concrete that we do end up wanting to look at, at least I have the time set out for you. If you do need to reschedule or cancel that appointment, then that's totally okay. I'll take the morning off. Sound good? That sounds, sounds, sounds awesome. Perfect. So let's go ahead and book this out, and then bam. Guys, she just got. She just brought it from a from a from a phone call. She got it to an appointment. She proved her worth. Got it signed, and now is setting up the next appointment all in one shot. That is the transition of what a buyer should look like. Now, what after that? It's a whole totally different ballgame after that. But right now, she at least secured that buyer that she just completely signed. She just didn't let it go into limbo. Okay. I don't leave any of my appointments or calls without setting the next step. And once you leave it in the buyer's hands, you may never hear from that person again. They are not thinking real estate 24 seven the way we are and life happens. So we need to be moving that ball forward. At the end of my showing, 
okay, great. I'm going to send you the disclosures for this house and I'm going to call you on Friday so that we can talk about everything, go through the comps and see if we want to place that offer that's due Sunday. Yeah. Sound good? Sounds good. Every time. Brian, what's up? So him saying he's not ready for six months, is that what you went He said on? he might not be ready, but based on our whole conversation, he has the money, he's ready. He All he showed was nerves. He's People get like scary. They want to back out. They're like, oh, well, what if I... Oh, okay. so it's no big deal. I'm not going to back out just because you said that. I understand, and you should understand the value of home ownership. You should. I tell my clients, I truly believe in the value of home ownership. When they have doubts about it, when they're asking me about the market, is it a bad time to mind? Whatever. If you are so like with your conviction of like understanding that the the faster that they buy, the better it is going to be for their life and their family. You'll be able to overcome any of that. Hey, and it's understandable to have nerves, guys. We're buying. We're not buying an apple. We're not buying an apple phone. Right. We're buying a, a, a million dollar property here in this area. Right. That is a big commitment. Is there going to be nerves? Hell yeah. You're looking at a one point three million. That's a six, seven thousand dollar payment that you got to make. You're obligated for the next 30 years. So it is a big commitment. There's going to be nerves. It's our job to settle those nerves down and keep the ball moving forward, because if you don't move that ball forward, trust me, they will get in their head. And they will figure out ways of why it's not the right time for them to buy. And even if they don't buy for seven months, I don't care. I still want to be their agent. I still want them to have this like little agreement that we did, the formality of it even. It's almost ceremonial. Like they just, it's just that one step up. It's not a legally binding agreement. We can't take this back. Then like you have to work with us. But it's like they took the time, they signed it, they believed in you. And you just try to ride that momentum with them as much as you can. I'm a real estate agent. I want to hire you. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm I'm not pushy. I'm mean, like you guys are gonna find your own style. I don't think pushy is a good one to have, to be honest. But you need to be assertive when you need to be. When they need that push and they're just on the fence, yes. But most of the time, I'm very like I'm poised. I'm I'm here for them. I'm their resource. But I'm gonna work for them as they need me to. I'm not I'm not here to like shove anything down their throat or get mad at them yeah. ever. That's not sales, guys. Sales is not that. That's the old school sales of like the '80s, where it was like you need to buy or what. You're not man enough. That doesn't that doesn't exist nowadays, right? <laughs> now it's more of a of you taking the back seat and you're guiding them as a consultant through the whole process, right? So take that approach. It goes a lot farther. Yep. Right. Um, any questions, guys? Any questions? Because that's I think that's it, right? We could hear you guys on Zoom too if you guys have any questions. Is, is there any questions that you guys have? Is there anything that you guys want to? Um, spit out at us really quick anything comments questions nothing. concerns nothing. nothing the recording of this are you, we can email it to you um Yes, we will. Find Enrique, will email. Yeah, Enrique will figure out how to email it to you guys. It's being recorded, so we'll, we'll, we'll It'll have be it somewhere. Out. It'll be somewhere. I don't know where it's going to go, but we we'll are with them tomorrow. We're just a talent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you just upload it to Drive, we can pull it from Drive. Yeah, yeah we're, we don't do that. We're not doing that. But we'll have them take care of it. I got a lot of you. We'll have them take care of it. I'll bring it up then and we'll, we'll put a message out there. Yeah. Um, guys, no? anything, guys? Anything? Uh, I have a question. Oh, Shit, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, no, like when you when you set the next appointment after the buyer's consultation, like what is what is that next appointment? Like, is it for showings? Is it for like oh, what do you what each for it's showing? A, it, it, it's for whatever it makes sense to be. If if most of the times it's showings, 99% of the time it's gonna be showings. Um, if for some reason they're I don't know, out of the country and the can't, I don't know. Like it may, it's, it's just showing. Just yeah. Up. At that point, at that point you want, listen, um, it, it's like when you go to a car dealership, you want them to get inside the car, yeah. right? Hey, let's go for a test drive. Let's go for a test drive. Let's get you in the car, right? Get them out showing properties as soon as possible, regardless if it's the house, even they want to go see, even if it's a, a shitty house, that's not even on the radar, get them inside of a house. That's the part where it's like, Hey, let's get inside of a car. Let's go, let's go for a test drive. Everything should be because you're solidifying the client more and more and more and more. And you better also come with that energy and that performance and all of that shit and everything that you said on that appointment too. You need to come prepared, you guys. You guys got it? Question? That was a good question, George. Thank you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Thank if you. there's no other questions, you guys all, especially you newer guys, you need to read through this uh, presentation and you guys need to practice with each other. The senior agents are here for you guys, but we don't want to be the first ones you try this on. We, we're too busy for that. Practice with each other, mess up with each other, fumble through it with each other, and then maybe go up to a junior agent, then a, maybe a team specialist, then come to us and really refine it by that point. Agree? That's how I agree. We were, yeah, that's how we did it. We were doing each other. Yeah. And this, yep. like, I was telling Brian, too, because he was asking me, like, or 
was it you, Jay? One of you was asking me yesterday, like some questions that were like specifically answered by the presentation. And I almost verbatim gave the same script that I would have just said on a constitute. That's how internalized it is for me because this information doesn't change. It's it's the same. It applies to, to all of real estate. Now, 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 guys, for all the newbies that have been around here, Z, how long have you been with us? How, how long you, yeah, how long have you been with us? Um, like a year and a couple months. A year and a couple months, guys. And look how poised she is. Look how great her presentation was. To me, I think she did a fantastic job, guys. No joke. As someone who's been in it for 15 years, seeing someone come in here and do a presentation like that is great. This is also your competition. This is also the competition that you're going up against. I asked Aaron yesterday, if you and I had the same client and we were going up against each other, who would win, right? Use her as a, as, as a model of where you guys need to be at, right? How do you get to that point? You get to that point by putting in fights, putting in the practice. She's very studious when it comes to this kind of stuff, right? She's reading it stuff, other stuff on her own. That's the reason why she's able to excel and become a top agent here at, at PRG. So it's not like you guys cannot do this. Anyone can do this. Zahara is proof of that. All you need to do is put the work and the effort into it. All right, guys? Hey, guys. Can I say something? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say good job. Good job. That was awesome. I was listening to the, the last half of, of your training. That was awesome. Um, I got some takeaways, too. Just, just stuff that I forgot, but a big part of you delivering an awesome presentation is competence, your competence, right? Because two people can say the same exact lines, but if one person says it more confidently, it's going to resonate a lot more with the client. Um, and a big part of why Zahara is successful is because she's confident, because she's practiced this so many times, and she acts as a leader to her clients. You got to be the, cli the client's leader. They want someone to lead them. Because clients are nervous about buying homes in this market. It's super competitive. It's a big investment. They want to know that if I hire, if I hire you, you're going to lead me to the finish line. They don't want to feel like they know more than you. Um, so it's just confidence also. Make sure you're confident. Make sure you practice this thing. But good job, guys. Awesome training. Thank you. All right, guys. All right, we're done. We're done for the day. Don't ask us questions. We're out of here. <laughs> Oh wait, how do I? It's, it's